Hi guys, Nick here with BitGalaxis, bringing you our latest video on our Space Combat prototype. And in this video, we're going to cover some of the audio setup and creating explosions and using health to uh, determine when we should explode. And um, remember that my AI previously uh, kind of just follows me. It just turns towards me and starts following me, so it's not very smart. And you're going to see uh, <laughs> a lot of that here in a second. So we're going to start, start shooting some ships. You've seen that some have already blown up because they just fire whenever they, they're within a certain range. Um, and so they fire at each other because they don't consider that their own allies are... Are in front of them so um anyway if we fire you can see a couple things happen we we uh create a fireball we have some particles to create some smoke and we also play a sound an explosion sound that really sounds more like a laser where i've dropped the pitch a bit um but anyway as you can see we've, we've got something that actually kind of resembles you know explosions and <laughs> As I said, the AI on the ships is not very smart at all, and so we'll just kind of keep firing here. But let's go ahead and go through the setup of this. So the first thing I want to go over is a couple of important scripts that kick off all of these events with the audio and the explosion and the particles. And the first script we're going to go over is the laser behavior for our Raycast laser. And remember, in the previous video, I'll link to it right now, look for it in the top right corner we had set up this raycast laser to detect when something was hit and we even went ahead and said we're going to destroy the laser and then when it hits something we're going to add force at position now for the purpose of this video i had set it by default to a thousand so in the demonstration you saw right at the beginning of the video those objects had like 50 health and so you can see here, I'm actually dealing 100 damage. I put it in there. That's part of the script for the enemy. Um, so they're blowing up before you can actually see that force being applied. But if they had more than 100 health, then when we hit them, they would be reduced down to 100 um, in that script and they would, they would bounce. So, or, you know, move off in some direction. So... The only two lines that we've added are these two here. So the script first makes an assumption. We are going to want to look for the enemy ship script. So on the object that we've hit. So it says enemy ship. We're just calling it enemy, that variable. And this collider, we're going to find whatever we've hit. We want to find that enemy ship component, which is that script attached to it. So if our object doesn't have an enemy ship attached to it, it's not going to have anything. So we're going to first check if enemy. And then if there is an enemy, we're going to deal, you know, a uh, hundred damage. So, and this, this is really just, you know, we have to go to the other script to see what this does. So we're actually just passing this off at this point. So you can already tell there's a problem with this. This was just coded to get it done. Um, but this is not very scalable. We have to assume that there is an enemy ship attached to um, every object that we hit that we want to take damage. What we'd probably want to do instead is create a health script that does health for everything. So anything that takes damage, we'd put health on. And then we would give it a public float or a serialized field where we would change that value. Um, and, and, and actually, what we'd probably want to do is actually have a uh, scriptable object that we would attach and we would do damage that way. So um, that way we're not having to manually add that to every single, you know, every single object we're putting out there. We could just have a few pre-configured settings. So that was more complicated than I wanted to get in today. But what we're saying here is we're just going to assume that we have an enemy ship we're finding. And if we find it, go ahead and call a damage function from that enemy uh, script. So let's jump into the enemy script and see what's happening there. So this is the point where we have, we have some new variables we'll go over here. I've kind of hidden everything else in regions. If you're not sure what a region is in C Sharp, you can just do... Um, you can put this pound region, give it a name, and then you can expand everything. So I've, I've hidden some things here just so we're not looking at everything related to our enemy ship right now. But for these new variables, we've got our float health, which by default I set to 500. In the prefabs from our scene, I set them to 50. And remember, we were giving 100 damage, so we're destroying them on the first hit. So our we also have this game object explosion and this particle system explosion part. So I'm going to show you some prefabs that I've made. There's a game object that's an explosion. 
um, and that that's a particle that we have for the explosion as well we're putting those in there we're grabbing those um, for when we get destroyed so I have this function damage I said public void damage so the laser is calling that enemy dot damage that's what that is so public void damage and then we're taking that float damage amount so our health which by default is 500 but I've set to 50 minus equals damage amount so if it's 50 minus 100 that we got from that laser our health is you know now going to be negative 50 and if health is less than or equal to zero we're going to do a couple of things so the first thing we're going to do is instantiate the explosion that actual that's that sphere that we see when it blows up that's there's a little quick white sphere that pops up and then we're also going to start those particles that animation for that particle um, and then we're going to destroy game object so when we call this and this is all we call what we're actually meaning is this object the ship we destroy the ship so now we've created this uh, exploding sphere and that's going to go work and so let's go take a look at that real quick and see how that's working so let's go to our explosions and we're going to look at um, the first thing is actually the prefab for the explosion and the explosion itself has a few components on it it has an audio source and what we're doing with that audio source is we are taking the laser 2 sound file and then we're also normally this would be none but I have set that to master I've actually created a um, audio mixer and uh, increase the volume on it because without it this laser 2 um, sound file is actually not very loud and so it's hard to hear so I went ahead and added that you may not have to if you get an, an actual explosion sound that's loud enough this probably wouldn't be necessary I just did that because I chose a weird file for my sound effect um, and I also changed the pitch I dropped this down to 0.69 uh, you know, 0.7 was kind of my goal, but um, I dropped just a little bit to make it sound a little bit um, deeper, I guess, because it's a little too uh, high pitched for an explosion sound because it really is a laser sound. So um, once it's instantiated, it's going to play that audio and we'll go look at the script for this to show you that. So we're going to edit script here and the explosion script is really just a few things. We're getting that audio source. We have the uh, float end of life. So this is just for the explosion. We're going to destroy it. And then we also have that audio event, audio sound. Now, this is actually for a scriptable object. I was building a scriptable object setup for the audio, um, but I'm not using it. I didn't want to cover that because that's uh, a lot more complicated. Uh, but the way it's working is, is whether I'm using the uh, scriptable object settings or if I'm using uh, the the audio source and changing it there it's the same thing i have them set up the same way so i'm not covering that we're going to gloss over that because it could be quite a long talk on its own um but we have our start method and all we're doing is saying well let's give it a five second lifetime right um and when that lifetime expires in our update then we'll destroy the explosion so anything within it it's all going to go away um but our audio source, we're going to pick up that component audio source. And then once we have that, we're going to go ahead and play it. So we already have our clip that we need. We already have the pitch. All those settings were set um, in, in the editor. So once we have that, we play it. It plays through. And that's pretty much it. You'll hear that sound file play. Um, and that's, that's the end of the audio aspect of things. However, we've also got to go over our explosion and the animation. So we have this explosion... Um, prefab we're going to open this real quick because there is an animation so if you notice in the video the explosion was just a big ball that would disappear and it's really not doing that and what I've done is something really pretty simple and maybe not even a good thing to do um, I think probably what I should do is destroy the sphere once it's done doing its thing but for now what I'm really doing is just kind of hiding it by making it really small until the object destroys itself so the sphere itself we're clicking on this um, its animation is just changing its scale and so I've added some keyframes here and you can see like it's it's really fast like really stupid fast like not even I think this is actually a second um, so we're like quickly flying through this scale and you may not even see all this but the first step is we're scaling it to about 15 so it's actually one 
Um, it goes to 15 and then it jumps to 25. So 15, 25, and then back down to 20. Just real quick to kind of get that, um, you know, like a pulse a bit. And then it, you know, scales down to like 0 0.01. And so again, I'm just hiding it. Um, it's so small that you won't see it, but reality, you know, we might want to make this more complicated and destroy uh, that, that mesh so we don't actually have it there at all. Um, but that's what I'm doing for now is just, just hiding it, making it so small you can't see it. So that's it for that. Now, we also have a particle component, but the particle, going back to the script here um, on our enemy ship, is when it dies, we are instantiating the particle system along with the sphere. And normally you would actually probably want to tie these in some way. I just kind of made this, uh, uh, quickly threw it in there like, hey, here's a way you can make this work. You, you would have to manually update this though if you had any changes, and that would be hard to track. There's, there's much better ways, much better ways of scaling things than this. This was just to get the point across that, hey, you can instantiate multiple things at once to get all sorts of effects that you want. So I wanted to have an explosion and then have, you know, have it linger a bit. You know, like with, with a, an explosion, you want it to be big, you want it to be loud, but you also want it to, you know, kind of stick with you for some, you know, have something to, to show, oh yeah, it, there was an explosion and that was huge. That was big. We want it to kind of settle in a little bit. So that's why we have the particles to leave some smoke and, you know, remind us, yeah, that, that happened. So in the particle system, there's here's a cute few key things to take away from this. Um, we have our simulation speed is 17. So when you make this uh, up or down, when you drag this up or down, it's going to go faster. Um, I have um, the start color the same, about you know, kind of the same as as the uh, the sphere itself. Um, and then our emission, I don't have rate or rate over distance, anything like that. What I did do was a burst. So pretty soon, like I have a really low time here, I emit 500 particles just once. Um, and so we emit them all. Like we give it, use these settings and you're gonna see that 500 particles just burst out immediately. And that's, that's what we're looking for. Um, the shape is a sphere. And so it has a radius of 30 and um, and that's the only thing that I changed on that. By default, it's going to have 360 if you change the shape to a sphere. If you were to go like a cone or something like that, this is all going to change. But I made it a sphere, and we've got 360. Um, our color over lifetime, I wanted to start out with something kind of bright that looked like the explosion, kind of had the similar color. Um, so I changed the colors from this to kind of a smokier gray and then the black. So in it, I want that to go to gray rather quickly. But then um, what it was, you know, the thing I changed... Uh, also was the uh, the alpha so that it was you know this is bright it stands out and then this is actually transparent once it gets you know more transparent towards the end and I, I adjusted this so the the alpha didn't actually match the color change I wanted to kind of uh, play with that and I just kind of kept watching it adjusting these over and over again until I got something that looked right and so that's how I got the particles to look like something that was you know you had a bunch of things flying and then they just kind of it gets dark like a like a real explosion would. Um, so, and in this kind of stuff, it really is just about like doing what makes makes it look right to you. Um, if you don't think this looks good, you know, uh, tweak it to your desire. I don't think it looks like the best. I'm not saying this is an amazing setup, but this is kind of a good way to get started and to play with it and tweak it. Um, and the same thing like with the scale, you could theoretically script the scale of the object of the the explosion. Um, but it makes it really hard to do that if you have to change the script manually and, and then go back in, opposed to just changing the, a few keyframes and say, oh, that doesn't look right, and just adjusting the time a little bit by dragging a slider um, and then playing real quick. That's so easy to do. That's why I was using an animation opposed to like scripting it, because you could. You could script it, but um, tweaking things here and there is a, is a pretty good way of, of making it look good all right, so to recap everything we did though, we talked about you know how we hit the other object using the ray cast and how we deal damage by checking for that enemy ship component and then calling the damage script. And then the enemy component picks up from there and it detects if my health is less than zero, we're gonna create an explosion. And then the explosion starts off from there. It has a script and it destroys itself after five seconds, but 
we have the sphere, we have the audio, we have the particles, which are actually separate. So we want to probably, you know, at a later update, actually combine those so that those aren't two separate things being instantiated. Um, but for now, we get that effect. So that's all I've got for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching. Um, and hopefully you saw some flaws because there really are some. There's there's a lot of thing, improvements to be made with that. Um, but we'll work on that as we progress through the system. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I wanted to thank you guys for watching. And I hope to see you next time.